I really like talking and telling stories that lately have shifted into being manifested through clothes as my tool of communication. I feel there's a clash for most of us trying to find a middle ground being um, overly expressive or politely reserved. I figured I couldn't be the latter while I studied psychology. I figured I couldn't be a good listener or I couldn't hold back my impulsive thoughts. Not as good as to be a shrink, obviously. Nonetheless, even though I dropped out after the first year, psychology helped me channel my interests differently. My mom tells me that since I was a little uh, kid, I had the tendency to analyze her and my aunt and other random people too. I would pick up their gestures, uh, their movements, the way they talk, and especially what they are wearing. I remember this vaguely. However, I remember how this came back handy when I went to study costume design. Studying costume design, it was fundamental to be able to read and understand the character and then design clothes based on their features. Um, there's a delicate side, I feel, being costume or fashion designer, as you should really become one with the wearer to bring out the core elements that speak for them, like a story told through clothes. Um, you put yourself in their shoes and sometimes teleport yourself in different periods and circumstances to really understand what it means to be wearing that piece of cloth or garment. How I fell into it came naturally, I guess, as it all connected in a personal level. Uh, when I started to study costume design, I was going through a transition in my mid-late twenties, had moved to a new country, was pretty much alone and was just getting to know myself and answer the questions by myself. Had a heartbreak, which I thought was major, but they never really are. And uh, had finally reconciled with my teenage anxiety of losing my father. So this emotional elevation was gravitating naturally towards the subject of my studies. I was studying costume design, which requires a degree of emotional intelligence. It requires the necessary empathy to really understand where is the character coming from emotionally and then design the clothes uh, and you can actually manifest their emotional journey in clothes. Um, way before uh, university, although even I decided that I dropped out of psychology and I had to be real with myself that I wasn't so good at it, I took away something that served me right at this point character analysis from different perspectives. Sometime before university, and specifically during my studies, I was infatuated by the author Neil Gaiman and his series of comic books named Sandman. Sandman consists of anthropomorphic characters named Dream, Desire, Despair, Delirium, Destruction, Destiny, and Death, otherwise known as the Endless. I love the book. I had been hooked for a while as they spoke to me in an emotional level. I was so fascinated with author's interpretation uh, or person personification of these emotions or state of beings, if I can say metaphysical state of beings, that I guess unconsciously it pushed me towards the idea to start and think emotions hypothetically in a physical form. How things really fell into place was uh, serendipity in itself. It was by chance that I started summer classes for fashion technology and for me it was a new beginning of a whole new dimension of possibilities to be able to express these abstract ideas and emotions I had in mind. And that's how I found peace with the first work that started my journey named Morphogenesis of Emotions. <laughs>
collaborator, Betty Zhang, who was uh, studying uh, interactive design, did a joint thesis researching on fashion technology and interactive garments. On my side, I did a thorough research on emotions and their reaction in our body, and then extended that research in biology, analyzing the development of shapes in organisms known as morphogenesis. We made a garment uh, based on positive emotion, taking love as a subject, and then we created shapes uh, in uh, the dress that would bloom or transform whenever uh, you are flirting or the significant other is near. Uh, we used electronics that were wired in the dress, and uh, then the performer would control the transformation of the uh, dress by pressing the buttons on her cue. In theory, we analyze how data taken from the body through biometric measures of emotion would cause the dress to interact. But practically on stage, we knew it would be a little bit difficult, so we made the pressing of the buttons as part of choreography. Obviously, I cried when the show ended. First, because I saw my mom crying in the audience because she really knew what this meant for me. And also because for the first time in my life, I had pushed myself so far and deep into something that was accumulated in me and finally brought it to life. So this uh, defined the beginning of my journey towards uh, fashion technology. And then the next project uh, followed up again based on emotions negative ones this time, named Organic Extimorph, which was an interpretation of stress and anxiety. This project marked uh, the beginning of my professional journey, uh, my return to Kosovo, and the opening of the studio uh, that I name fight or flight, obviously. Um, I started to love the opportunity that technology was giving me. It was an extension of expression without uh, moving too much. It was sort of making the dress speak for itself. But I soon realized that it's more to it than just performativity and artistic aspect. Using technology will help us in daily functions and not just for entertainment and fashion, but for health benefits too. And this is how I got even more curious to know about the relation between organic functions, technology, and how can uh, these two merge into clothes. I was uh, keen on knowing more about evolution, innovation, uh, engineering, and especially history. I often get engaged in conversations with my friends regarding fashion industry and its state right now how we have too much fashion going on, but also so much negative impact. And then I try to find meaning of doing fashion further on. And this is when I start to embrace the innovative aspect of it, even though sometimes it's misunderstood, or it meets hesitation. I mean, if we look at the history of clothes um, through transitional and centuries, societal changes, uh, economical crisis, wars, and uh, revolution, we see the silhouettes of clothes that we have, like different ones, and then we play with styles and around these silhouettes. We repeat, basically, styles around these silhouettes. But what we can do further is explore the field of textiles and then play with these new digital tools that will enable us to produce digitally printed textiles, 3D printed shapes and patterns, etc., and then enhance the functionality um, of our daily activities, daily routines, using technology. And thus, this becomes a crossing of fashion and functionality using artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, uh, engineering, biology, and a lot more in a very delicate way as part of both evolution of human capacity, but evolution of creativity as well, in this case, fashion. Uh, I've learned that researchers and innovators have looked into nature and also physiology of the body and are exploring ways to mimic these functions and processes into clothes to help us stay in track with ourselves 
uh, monitor our changes in the body, whether physically or emotionally, through phone apps uh, that can be connected to uh, the garment uh, through different electronic components, like conductive components. And then wearable technology is further uh, researching on programmable and transformable textiles that can react to a different stimuli, like light or temperature, and enables us to adapt in certain circumstances or climates. Um, potentially, fashion industry is relying as I said, in 3D uh, printed garments, and moreover into biotextiles with conductive capacity that not only helps us stay in track with ourselves, but helps the environment too. Because not so far in fact, fashion industry is one of the greatest air and water polluters. So I suppose the digital transition is inevitable in this world that is constantly shifting. But I also know that we ask ourselves, are we losing human touch with so much digital advancement around us? And I ask myself the same question every time I think of a design or a prototype that can potentially be produced into a garment that you and I will buy at the store in the future. Is it viable? Is it feasible? And is it human enough? Because, of course, using technology doesn't mean for people to feel like cyborgs walking wired with batteries, nor to lose privacy. The idea of uh, using um, technology in uh, uh, clothes is for it to be subtly integrated in, in our everyday functions, mon helping us to monitor our health, uh, different activities such as sport, etc., connect to the community, and extend the design possibilities. All of this by creating long-lasting, unique, and multifunctional garment that maybe in the future will make us appreciate the clothes that we buy, own, or will teach us to consume less or cautiously. With these ongoing researches uh, in the field of fashion technology, um, we try to keep in touch from our little studio in Pristina as difficult and challenging as it could be sometimes, considering that fashion, let alone innovation, is not quite a priority. And also because I meet a lot of confused reactions, like people need to understand what is the purpose of this research. And it's totally natural because fashion technology is fairly new in the whole world and not just in Kosovo or in Albania or in the region. However, we managed to run the segment of fashion technology where we prototype garments uh, to demonstrate specific functions using um, simple technology and then researching uh, 3D printed uh, textiles and garments that have proven to be the new eco and efficient method of designing clothes. And then we also run our commercial segment of everyday wear uh, producing two collections a year in the concept of slow fashion. So overall, throughout my journey in until now, I feel that things fell in place just at the right time. Um, I didn't want to make purposeless clothes without an emotion, without a character, or without a story. I belong to a generation that is adaptable in the world that is constantly shifting, so I wanted to find my tools and my channel to contribute in this transi transition that maybe could be the future where we stay connected and don't lose the principles of being human. I would like to share with you a short video um, that was a collaborative work at this year's Ars Electronica Festival in Linz, which is a cognitive, emotional, and physical experience manifested in garment through light and through breathing.
And while at our And while at Ars Electronica, I would like to end my talk today by saying they shared in this year's edition of the festival that I believe summarizes my story today. Digitalization does not change our world, but instead changes the way and what we can and must do in this world all the more fundamentally.